Cool beans. So now we've got our custom navigation ready, our custom carousel in place. I guess the next thing we have to do is kind of modify this bottom content to be whatever it is that we want it to be. In this case, we really wanted to include the form as well as some of our listings. So let's start. Um, we have to revisit this concept of the grid again. So we created a two column grid here that spans you know, six columns this way and six columns this way in order to create effectively a two column grid. In this case, maybe we wanna kind of mix it up here. Um, so let's first start by deleting all of the old stuff that we have. So here's our navigation bar. Let's kind of just close all this kind of stuff. Uh, and then also we wanna, let's say, delete all of the existing stuff that they have from before. So end of the featurettes, cool beans. We don't need those. Now, I deleted something containing a container. Now the footer should be contained in a container. So just to kind of retain the integrity of that, I've, yeah, see there's the container start. So let's put the footer outside just so that's a little bit more clear. A footer container, and then it's gonna show that this is the end of the container. And that way, down there is the bottom of my text still wrapped in a container. Um, so it keeps it centered. But now I can fill this kind of space in between the carousel and my footer with content. And I want to split that content, the form and the actual showed listings, 25% uh, or one in fourth space and then three quarters of the space uh, the, with the listings, ded dedicated to the listings. So I want to start by centering my content with a container. And I want to create a, a row basically for the two types of content that I have, the first being the filter and the second being the uh, contained listings. Then I want to split it up into two columns, uh, one of which takes up one third of this, one fourth of the space. So that's one fourth of twelve columns, which brings us to a total of three columns, right? And then the latter half being nine columns in length. So that brings us to one fourth of the space and three quarters of the space. And so let's see what that looks like actually. Let's, uh, well, nothing really happens because um, we've, just been, we've just created abstract, uh, abstract designs. We've allocated this grid, but it has nothing really inside the grid. So I want to create this class called well. Um, Bootstrap provides us with like this wrapper, this thing that uh, has this sort of background, this little gray blob, to almost define this distinct section. Okay, And so that's where I'm going to put my filter and I'm going to wrap it in a well to kind of distinguish it from everything else. I'm going to give it a, a slightly smaller title and that's going to call that's going to be called filter. Neat. So there's my filter going on there and then I can create what's called a form. So what a form is, a form is basically a collection of elements on an HTML page where the user can actually provide input. So far, everything that we've seen is visual. It's stuff we consume. But now we can actually provide places where the user can provide us with information that we can then interpret with something like Django or, or a server. So uh, the form consists of a number of elements. And the way that forms work in, Jang, uh, in Bootstrap, we can actually look to the uh, documentation. So if we go on the forms guide, while well, it'll give us some information, it suggests that we keep this with form control. So here's something, we have a form, and then we wrap all of the different elements of the form in a, in a div called form group, and then we call the actual inputs form control. So let's try that. So we have our form. Now let's say I want to uh, filter by, oh, I don't know, uh, price point. So we start with a form group, and then I have my label, which is the, the label of the form element. So minimum price, and then I have my input, type equals text, so that they can actually input text. Uh, we call it a class form control. We'll, call, we'll give it an ID so that it's more unique, and we'll say uh, min price, and then we'll end this div, and let's see what that looks like. Neat. So there is the uh, the text, the content. Now that's bolded, so maybe I don't necessarily want this to be bolded. 
So I have this label within uh, uh, that's basically always bolded. Font weight is 700. So maybe I want to go to my custom CSS and when I override something really big like a label, I keep it at the top and I want the font weight to be normal. Let's see how that looks. That's a lot better. So I want to keep going. Let's say I want to do a, a maximum price as well. So I'm going to copy over these elements. Uh, thanks, James. We'll talk about that afterwards. Uh, maximum price and change the ID because this is unique, right? So this has to stay unique always. Now we've got our maximum price. Really cool thing that it does is it kind of already does a lot of the design for you in terms of keeping this uh, spaced. Um, let's say we want to do the same thing for the number of rooms. Minimum rooms. Maximum rooms. Okay, cool. We're starting to get it rolling. And let's see if utilities are included or not. Um, now, the way that Bootstrap handles checkboxes, inline checkboxes, are actually available here. So here's a div class checkbox. And then inside it is a label. And inside that is an input of type checkbox. So if I kind of copy that over, div class equals checkbox, then I do a label and I do an input type equals checkbox and I do utilities included close all this off neat stuff it's uh, it's in the uh, it's in the filter there and then what I'd want to do is I'd want to kind of have a line here that's the horizontal uh, line element in fact it doesn't even need to have that slash and I'd want to have my input type equals submit. So this is how you submit that information. When the user clicks on this button, input type submit is a button. We'll give it a class to make it look more like our other buttons. Um, it'll actually tell the browser, okay, I've inputted data, now send that information to the website uh, to do something with it. So let's see what that looks like there. Cool beans. And we're almost done here. In fact, what we could do is we could actually have this um, button block I think is the class to make this fit to the full size of the filter and we're kind of done with this component so that's the kind of filter form when we get into Django we're actually going to be able to program this and other forms to do stuff for us uh, in order to actually filter the listings the next thing that we're going to style is actually the individual listings themselves so.